For our final award this evening, I'm proud to present the Elton John AIDS Foundation Second Founders Award to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. It's a tremendous honor to have the Secretary General here with us tonight with his beautiful wife. He's been a lifelong champion of equal rights, standing up against discrimination around the world since before his time at the United Nations. Under his leadership, the UN has made unprecedented progress in the movement for LGBT equality. The Secretary General helped launch UN Free and Equal, a global public, edu pu public education campaign for LBGT, LGBT equality. He established a zero tolerance policy on homophobia at the UN, bravo. He declared LGBT rights one of the greatest neglected human rights issues of our time. Pretty amazing stuff. And he constantly reminds governments of their duty to defend vulnerable minorities. He's inspired people around the world, including all of us at the Elton John Ace Foundation with his public statements condemning the criminalization of LGBT people. I'm deeply grateful, and we're all deeply grateful in this room, for his work. We created the Founders Award in 2013 to recognize truly extraordinary accomplishments and celebrate people who have demonstrated an exceptional commitment to promoting our vision and working towards its goal. I can think of no one, no one more deserving of this award today than United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Thank you, so Elton, David, and all of you for this great honor. I proudly accept this honor in the name of my fellow staff, United Nations colleagues working day and night for justice and equality for every member of our human family. I also want to thank Elton John AIDS Foundation for your extraordinary work. As you may know, I grew up long ago in a deeply, deeply conservative country, Republic of Korea. There were almost no visible gay and trans people in Korea at the time. I think that's true for many people. We never discussed sexual orientation and gender identity. I think that's true for many people of my generation in Korea and most other uh, countries. So this advocacy did not come naturally uh, to me as a Secretary General. When I saw that lives were at stake, I had to uh, speak up. This is a matter of life and death. It's a struggle for human rights. And no matter how much opposition I faced, I knew it was a mission for the United Nations. I started listening to colleagues and to human rights activists. I heard their stories. I was inspired by their courage. And I also reached out to many LGBT uh, people living with HIV. Far too many still suffer stigma. They struggle even for basic health care. This is a terrible injustice. I applaud the life-saving work 
of the Elton John AIDS Foundation. It complements the efforts of the joint United Nations program on HIV AIDS. We share a common vision. No new HIV infections, no discrimination, and no AIDS-related death. And an AIDS-free world is in our sight. We can get there by the year 2030 when we implement the Sustainable Development Agenda with 17 SDG goals. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps not many people would admit they condone violence and discrimination. But then why do so many turn a blind eye when the victims are gay or transgender? Why are so many LGBT young people bullied at school and thrown out of their homes or jobs, rejected even by their own parents? Why is suicide such a massive public health threat for this community, taking so many promising young lives? Why are so many LGBT people attacked, assaulted, even murdered? How can it be that 73 countries, almost 40% of United Nations member states, still treat consensual same-sex love not as a source of joy to be celebrated, but as a crime to be punished. The answer lies partly in ignorance and its exploitation by irresponsible leaders who stir up anti-gay hate. I'd like to remind others that LGBT people are just that. They are people. They are worth just as much as anyone else. And they are born with the same inalienable human rights everyone else. The tide is turning. And I'm proud that the United Nations has made so many waves. More than 100 countries have accepted United Nations recommendations to change their laws to better protect the rights of LGBT people. When I visited a few years ago Malawi, I was told that one gay couple was imprisoned for hard labor for 17 or 15 years. I talked to President Butarika, uh, who later passed away. I told him very sincerely that, Mr. President, they are young people, young couple, they are human rights. They should not be prisoned just because they love each other as gay. He said, I don't like your policy. I don't like, I don't agree with your point. I don't like your policy. But since you are visiting my country, and since you are the Secretary General, let me think about uh, what can I do. Then I just forgot, I thought, I was very much grateful only with that comment. I thought it would take uh, two, three months and when we were having joint press conference, unexpectedly, surprisingly, he announced that these young couple, gay couples will be released immediately. They were released. In the past year alone, a dozen countries have introduced new legal reforms, including Three, that decriminalized same-sex relationship. United Nations is working very hard to reach out all these countries 
reach out all these leaders of the countries that they are wrong. They have to respect universal declaration of the human rights. UN teams are working every day to support these changes and to help LGBT communities get the equality they deserve. I credit the UN Free and Equal Campaign for LGBT Equality led by the UN Human Rights Office. When I first became Secretary General, I knew that many UN staff were working and living in shadow, discriminated. They were very afraid uh, to be exposed to that they are gays. Then I invited them. It's not that all staff meet Secretary General. Few people, we have tens of thousands of people, so it's very rare that for any staff would have a shake hands with the Secretary General. I invited about uh, two dozen of the staff. They came, I went, to, of course, you know, normally we take photograph. They refused to take photo. The why? No, we don't want to be exposed. We don't want to be seen that we are gays. So I promised them these photographs will be kept only by me privately and will be given it to you privately. This will not be released. Only on that occasion, on that promise, they took picture. And what happened? I promised that I will make United Nations the best working place where gays can work and live freely without being discriminated. And what happened? We, we established UN care. And they were very proud. The next year, they made the calendar. They made a calendar, UN care calendar. Equal right, free UN, free and equal campaign calendar with their faces, with my picture, 12 calendar, 12 month calendars. They were very proud. Our celebrity UN equality champions have generously donated their outstanding talent to this cause. I especially thank the Bollywood star, Selena Jaitley, who is here with us this evening. She's a true fighter for justice. Where is Selena? Okay, let's give her big hands. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, if my 20-year-old self could see me talking about these issues, he would have been very much surprised. <laughs> but I'm happy to say I found my voice, and every day more and more people are finding theirs. A certain brilliant superstar and humanitarian once asked, can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> Here now, yes, we feel the love. But it is rough out there, around the world, for millions who struggle just to be who they are and love who they love. Ladies and gentlemen, so I thank you for speaking out, and I ask you to keep up the fight. Let us shout loud and clear, loud and proud, until all people are free and equal. And as a fundamental principle of the Sustainable Development Goals, which was adopted by the world leaders last year, the main theme is so that nobody should be left behind. I thank you for your commitment.